Hello and welcome to the Mirror Football TV show with me, Dan Silver. Your regular host, Darren Lewis, is off today tapping up a French teenager to present this show in 2011. So I'm filling in with a roundup of today's paper talk. And talking of tapping up, we start with Manchester City, who are the latest club to be drawn into the ongoing transfer route. Our own mirrorfootball.co.uk is reporting that French club Rennes have reported the Blues to FIFA for allegedly unlawfully poaching young defender Jeremy Hellan. Rennes insists they had a pre-contract agreement with the Clairefontaine Academy product and now expect FIFA to take similar action to that which saw Chelsea being banned from signing players for two transfer windows following the signing of Gail Kakuta from Lens. FIFA have yet to comment, but how ironic would it be if Manchester City were to be prevented from doing the one thing they're really good at, spending lavish amounts of money on new players? Agents all over the globe are surely putting their accountants on red alert as I speak. Now, any ban could prove particularly problematic come January, given that Rubinho is angling for a move out of Eastlands. The Sunday Mirror reported at the weekend that Barcelona were willing to swap Thierry Henry for the Brazilian, although City were holding out for Lionel Messi. And I'm holding out for Euro lottery win. The Guardian today reports that Rubinho is apparently up for the mood, saying that it would make him happy and that it is not easy to say no to the European champions. Given Manchester City's lack of European football this term, Rubinho could theoretically move in the January transfer window and still be eligible to play in this season's Champions League competition. A scenario that would suit all parties, well, all parties except for Manchester City of course, especially if they're banned from getting in a replacement. Well, could we be facing a huge player exodus from the Premier League in January? Let us know what you think by leaving your comments on mirrorfootball.co.uk. Elsewhere, of course, it's England versus Croatia at Wembley tomorrow night, and Slavon Bilic is not, you sense, a man overly confident ahead of the big game. The papers are full of his attempts at engaging Fabio Capello in what we euphemistically term mind games. Our own Daily Mirror, in a piece entitled Wild Thing, and the Daily Express, under the headline Raging Rooney, report how the Croatia boss has ordered his players to target the volatile England striker tomorrow. Although, given Waz's tumbling act in the box against Slovenia on Saturday, this is a plan that has quite a large chance of backfiring. The Guardian, meanwhile, has an entertaining piece poking fun at Bilic's attempt to suggest Fabio Capello has weakened his side by taking away some of their Englishness. Frankly, we think these ploys are doomed to failure. The only hope Bilic has of destabilising Capello's steely new team would be to kidnap the manager and replace him with Steve McLaren. David Beckham and Frank Lampard were the England players wheeled out to face a slavering hound at a press pack yesterday, and both offered up plenty of headline-worthy chat. David Beckham played the sympathy card saying that he's mentally prepared to miss out on the plane to South Africa next summer. Bex, I'm fighting for my future, ran the Daily Star in response, while the sun splashed with the slightly hysterical world's end. Under the headline, I wouldn't feel guilty if I went to the World Cup finals and others did not, the Times, meanwhile, offered a more thoughtful piece on the value of Beckham to a 23-man squad and why it's too early to write old golden balls off. Now, given Aaron Lennon's electrifying performance at the weekend and the, pay, and the pace provided by other backups like Sean Mike Phillips and Ashley Young, it seems unthinkable that Beckham will start in South Africa. But the benefits of having him around, namely his experience, his use as an impact substitute and, not least, the way in which his presence would deflect media attention from younger members of the squad, are such that providing his fit and inform, you just can't imagine Beckham not making the trip. Or can you? Let us know by leaving your comments at www.mirrorfootball.com. UK. Bex's other big news was that he wouldn't be joining Sven Joran Eriksson's Notts County Revolution and in the same spirit I'd also like to take this opportunity to rule myself out of a role at Meadow Lane. Sorry Sven but I'm just not up for the move to Nottinghamshire. Frank Lampard, meanwhile, was at pains to stress how Chelsea's transfer ban will only make his side stronger. Ban can boost Blues, said the Sun, while the Daily Mirror ran with transfer ban will make Chelsea United, warns Lampard. Now you have to applaud Lamps' attempt at spin here, but frankly, Frank, you're fooling nobody. I'm willing to bet a 50k per week pay rise that the first thing that entered the heads of Anelka Drogba et al upon hearing the news was not how they were going to adapt to siege mentality, but rather how they were going to lay siege to Roman Abramovich's office in order to renegotiate their contracts. And finally, my favourite story of the day comes courtesy of Scotland's Real Radio, who interviewed the lovely Cheryl Cole on their breakfast show. 
Talking about her hometown club, the Geordie Lass revealed she would love to buy out Newcastle United, but unfortunately couldn't afford to. Now give it a couple of months, love, and the price will be so low you'll be able to buy it with the money that falls down the back of Simon Cowell's sofa cushions. But don't get too excited, Toon fans. If Cheryl was in charge, she'd also want her husband on the playing staff. Suddenly, Mike Ashley doesn't seem so bad, does he? Now that's all from me. Darren Lewis will be back tomorrow, but don't forget you can get all your football news throughout the day at mirrorfootball.co.uk.